Honor him this morning. Honor him this morning. Thank God for his saving grace in your life. His saving grace. Reconciliation with God is available through the blood of Jesus. You don't have to allow sin hold you back. There is grace. There is forgiveness. There is mercy from God. There is mercy. The blood of Jesus is the propitiation for our sins. Yes, see how far you brought me. Yes, are worthy to come before God but for the blood of the Lamb none of us none of us are worthy to stand before the Most High God but for His grace for the blood of Jesus for the sacrifice on the cross that's why you can come that's why we can come boldly because of the blood of the everlasting covenant Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul from darkness and from sin. Yes, Ebube. Yes, Ebube. See how far you brought me. Yes, Ebube. I'm so glad you found me worthy. I can see. I can see. Then I can tell. I can worship you the supreme being the one who knows the beginning of all things and has no beginning eternal one the most high the possessor of the heavens and the earth we honor you this morning and worship you and I pray oh God that you will speak by my lips the words of life you open the hearts of your children to hear open their ears to hear and open their eyes to see what you are saying this morning in Jesus name and everyone say amen please you may be seated please go with me to Genesis Chapter 8. I need to tell you ahead of time that I'm going to preach long. Nice to tell you ahead of time. So, if you are tired, close your Bible, get up quietly, and go home. You don't need to complain. Amen? So I've told you up front. Genesis 8, verse 20. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord. And took of every clean animal and of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled the soothing aroma. Then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake. Although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. 
nor will I again destroy every living thing as I have done. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. Uh, for a couple of weeks, I've been sharing with us on preparing for a future you do not know. And I talked about preparing for tomorrow's opportunities, tomorrow's challenges and crises, and tomorrow's responsibilities. Today, and of course, I focused on seed time and harvest. Today, I want to speak to all of us about the seasons of life. The seasons of life. That text says, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. These are seasons. These are seasons. I want to appeal to every one of you to listen to me with your heart. May God open your eyes, open your heart, and open your ears to hear and receive what can be come a major transformation in your life. The seasons of life. Uh, I saw a text in Second Kings, sorry, First Kings twenty. Let not the one you may want to go there and see it, read it, but that's actually Ahab. Ahab, the king of Israel, was speaking because the king of Syria, Ben-Hadad, had boasted and was threatening. And Ahab's response was, tell him, let not the one who puts on his armor boast like the one who takes it off. When a man is putting on his armor, there's a soldier who is preparing to go to war. When a man is taking off his armor, it's a soldier who is coming back from war. Ahab is saying, let not the soldier who is putting on his armor, going to war, be boasting like the soldier who has come back from war and is taking off his armor. So when I get to the battlefield, I will shoot them like this. I will dive like this. Don't mind them. Those guys know what they are doing. When we get there, we will show them. Wait till you come back alive first. Is that not correct? Yes. Let not the one who puts on his armor boast like the one who takes it off. This is how a lot of us young people are. A lot of us young people. You are in the early days of your life. And you are boasting. You are bragging. How? You judge your father and you judge your mother. It's a mistake. Why? Yes, young people generally have more information, but elders have more experience. Is that not correct? Yes. Youths are intelligent. I, I, I particularly enjoy working with our young folks. These days, they're very brilliant. I take our Bible study outline, the Bible study we're doing, why the Bible is the word of God. 
I prepare, I actually sit down, my, my son and I, Cyril, the second, he, we actually do the preliminary work of preparing the outline. So what he does, actually, he does all the research and he does the write-up. Then we discuss. And then I pass it on to Brother Richard and Pastor Tyre. And then, you know, they make their inputs and their comments. And uh, ever since I've been doing that work with my son, I've been amazed at, first of all, his level of research. If I remember the other day, I was talking with Richard, and Richard asked me a question. He said, what, did, what serious study? I said, pharmacy. He said, what? Pharmacy? And he's doing that kind of research? I said, well, young boy, intelligent. A lot of you young folks are very, very intelligent. I've worked with a lot of you. I've chatted with a lot of you. I've talked with both a lot of you. The other day, when Brother Rubens was doing the Thanksgiving or remembrance of his, his wife, 25 years of departure, I told you guys that his sons, his twin sons, built the uh, dining table, the furnishing in my dining, the dining section of my house. And um, I have to be honest. When I saw the design, I didn't think they can produce it. But they produced it. They built it themselves. When I saw the design of the table, the picture, photograph, I didn't actually think they can do it. And you know what's interesting? They didn't go and learn carpentry going to the workshop. They sat down with YouTube. How many of us elderly people can sit down on YouTube and learn a skill? So a lot of you young folks are actually very, very intelligent. But elders are wise. I like to tell young people, you're intelligent but foolish. And you need the wisdom of the elderly. Youths, you are just starting your journey into adulthood. Stop bragging and bluffing your parents and elders who have been in this journey at least two decades before you. You are just putting your armor. You are boasting like the one who is removing his own. You haven't married. You are bragging about what you would do as a married man. They don't mind my father. Wait till you marry. <laughs> Am I communicating with When I wasn't married yet, I remember talking to one woman. We were having a chat one day. I said, oh, no. When I get married, I'm going to cook. I'll be cooking. Because as a bachelor, I was actually cooking. I was cooking my food. I don't eat out. I have to cook to eat. So I, was actually, I used to cook. So I was bragging that when I get married, I'll cook. She looked at me and said, let's wait till you marry. But if you start eating a woman's food, you will not cook. Well, a prophecy has come true. <laughs> so I boasted too early. Before I got married, I knew that one of the major reasons men suffer financial failure is because they don't listen to their wives. I say I knew, not that they, they too, I, I knew, I knew from my father's experience, I'd also observed other men, and I found out that one of the fundamental reasons, I didn't say it's the only one, but one of the major reasons a lot of men suffer financial failure is because they don't listen to the counsel of their wives. Am I correct? Nobody is talking to me. Am I correct? <laughs> so I told myself that when I get married, I'll listen to my wife. Well, I've suffered financial failure for the same reason. So let him who is putting on his armor not boast like the one 
who is taking it off. Please help me tell your neighbor. Let me hear your voice. Tell your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. Uh, I think that the person who is about to put on his armor, when he sees somebody who is removing his armor coming from the war front, he should ask him, hey, how is it? How is it? Is that not correct? She ask him, how, how is life there? How do we cope? What happens? That's what to do. Not boasting and bragging and bluffing. That's what we all do. That's why we get into trouble. Because we don't recognize that this is a season. And that when you are in this season, you have to be asking those who are removing their armor, how far? How is old age? What does life look like when you're in your 50s? When you marry, what happens? Am I communicating, please? You ask questions. You learn. You ask. They will tell you. Glory to God. Seasons of life. We, uh, uh, seed time and harvest. Cold and heat. Winter and summer. And day and night. These are seasons. So I'll describe to you these seasons. Next slide. A season is a period of the year that is distinguished by special climatic conditions. So, seed time is seed time and harvest. What that simply means is that at that time of the year, that period, there are certain things that are characteristic of that period that make you say, this is seed time, or this is cold, or this is heat, this is winter, this is summer. Next slide. Seed time. Seed time is a season of sowing. It's a period of original development. So this is a season in life. If anybody misses this season, then that means in harvest you will get nothing. If in the season of seed time, you sow the wrong seeds, you will get a wrong harvest or a bad harvest. So seed time is a very crucial season. And everybody has this season in their lives. Yesterday, I had a very long and difficult chat with one of us. Somewhere in the chat, as I was listening to him, as I was talking, I remembered that in 2009, I traveled to Abuja after a wedding here to go and preach in a church. The pastor of that church is a woman. She picked me up from the airport. From the airport to her office was about a 45 minute to one hour drive. That woman spoke to me about the pains of her marriage. I don't know, I up to today, I cannot explain why that conversation shook me. But that conversation she did. She finished Went to her office, took a break. She was organizing some things. After that, we entered the car. She took me back, took me to a hotel. I was actually very hungry, tired and hungry. I had to eat and sleep. That woman kept me. I had to sit down and listen to her. Because she was in pain. Talked and talked. I was, I, all that was going through my mind is, ah, you mean a Christian woman is going through all of I, I couldn't, you know, you know, there are some things you don't imagine. Hello, are you with me? Uh, some things you imagine. Like I remember during when the lockdown was going to start, I wanted to buy food. And I was arguing with Uncle Lena and uh, Auntie Jean that the food we are buying, people will not need it until after seven days. That at least the food in their house will finish. See, in my own mind, 
Everybody has food in their house. Don't blame me. That's in my mind. Are you with me? It's lockdown that made me know that some people don't have food at all. They walk in the morning, then eat. Then they walk in the afternoon, then eat. Then they walk in the night, then eat. Then carry the one they will take home. Until the lockdown, I had no clue that there are human beings like that. None. I used to think all of us have food in the house. So after we argued, I said, okay. So I now said, okay, three days. So, they, so since they couldn't come, they said, okay, let's wait and see. Let's wait and see. We bought food Friday night. By Sunday morning this time, food cleaned. Ah. Without announcements. I was wondering, if we announced, what would have happened? <laughs> so that's the same thing that happened that day with my, I was, I was in total shock as I listened to her. So I said, wow. As soon as she left, I just took my phone. I wanted to send my wife. My wife was the first one I wanted to send the text. I said, if I send this text to my wife, she's not going to answer. And truly, 25 years, she has not answered that question. So I sent the text to four women immediately in this church. One of them, I'm looking at her now. Immediately. I just sent a text to them. Are you happy? I think that was the text. Essentially, I was asking, are you happy in marriage? Are you happy? One of the women said to me, Pastor, do you remember that this, this morning when you came for the wedding? Because I came very early that day. There was a wedding here. I came early. I said, do you remember when you came for a wedding that you met me and another woman talking. We are at the back. We all greeted. I said, yes. He said, this question you're asking me is what we were discussing. So my shock became worse. And all the four women I sent the text to gave me similar reply. This is where I'm now going. I came to church the next Sunday. I stood here and I asked every man, is your wife happy? How many remember? How many of you remember? I asked, is your wife happy? I was telling the brother yesterday, it is 25 years. No one man came to ask me. Why do you ask that question? What do you mean? Is it my job to make my wife happy? How am I to make my wife happy? Not one man. One. So I looked at the brother. I said, it is 25 years now. See what you are telling me. See what you are telling me. 25 years down the road. Meanwhile, when I told you that thing 25 years ago, I started the project. I started the project. I've been working on making my wife happy since the day I asked that question. Because... After I got that text, the text reply from those women, I just told myself, don't bother, you know your wife will not answer you, don't bother asking her. Just conclude, she's not happy, start your work. Start your work. So if people had asked me questions, I would have been telling them what I'm doing to myself, what I'm practicing, exercising myself in. You know what I'm telling you, I'm showing you seat time, because now I was talking with somebody yesterday, See when we're supposed to sow seed. It's harvest time now. See is harvest. See my harvest. Different harvest. Be playing with your life, okay? Don't sow the seed you should sow. Be arguing with the truth. You know you are very smart. Be arguing with the truth. Be contending with truth and God. It's of settling down and sow the right seed in your life. Then when harvest comes, you'll be asking, where is God? Oh, Satan is very strong. What is happening? What is happening is that you've not sown the right seeds. If you sow the wind, you reap the wild wind. Hey, where, where is our Google? Wild wind. <laughs> wild wind. If you sow the wind, that's what you reap. My friend is not here. 
my friend, Pastor Matthew, I, I, I was talking with him last yesterday. He visited me. So we were talking. I was telling him, I said, 20 years ago, last year, 20 years ago, last year. So what I'm telling you now was 2003, 2004. One day, I was just thinking. I was looking at my wife and I and how we are living. How we are living and how we are relating and what is happening to us. And I saw that the day our children leave this house and we now have what is called empty nest, we are not going to have a good life together. I saw it 20 years ago. I didn't tell my wife anything. I didn't say what to her, but I saw it. So I set the ball in motion. To start dealing with the issues I was observing. Working for the day who have emptiness. Well, last year we did. So last year, when my wife and I were alone in the house, I was observing two of us. See, don't forget, all these 20 years, I didn't tell her anything. So I was now watching two of us, how we relate, how we talk, how we, how we discuss issues, whether we argue, whether we quarrel, whether we keep each other, you know what they call silent treatment? Eh? Yeah, whether we are going to be giving each other silent treatment. Because only two of us are in the house. And after observing us for six months, not one day, not two months, six months, I told myself, well done, the project has worked. Seat time and what? Uh, I, I'm trying to show you. See, I'm telling you these two stories because I want you to know that one, I'm not a perfect human being. I too have issues and fault lines, but I see them far away. I sow the right seeds for the harvest I want. The harvest that I want now at this stage of my life, when my children are adults are on their way out of the house or out of the house, is that my wife and I walk together, we relate together, we are friends together, we travel around together, we are happy together. She's happy to be with me, I'm happy to be with her. You are not going to get it by just praying and fasting. You have to sow the seed for the harvest. You have to sow the seed for the harvest. Seed time and harvest. And please, all men, from now on, anytime you come to discuss anything that has to do with your spouse, don't ask me to talk to your wife. I'm not going to talk to your wife. I don't talk to mine. When I see something that needs to be resolved, I need to take care of, I don't go and tell my wife, you should do this, you should do this. No, I don't do that. I sit down with my God, see what I'm supposed to do, and start doing what I'm supposed to do, and then in faith, trust God to do what he should do with my wife. That's what I do. Why would you think I would teach you something else? Why should I practice something different? Because, because I want to counsel you. Please, I only give counsel by how I live. I cannot tell you to do what I don't do. So I can't. Go and meet professional counselors. I'm a Bible preacher. And I believe God and I believe his word. And I believe the truth. And I don't contend with God's word. No matter what I think, no matter my education, no matter my intelligence, if I see the truth of God's word, I dump my intelligence and take truth and run with it by faith, trusting God that he will cause that truth to bring forth fruit in my life. That's what I do. That's how I live. I cannot teach you otherwise, and I cannot counsel you differently. Can't. So, brethren, if you think I've been, I've been playing since when I'm doing sit time and habit, I'm not playing, no. I'm very, very serious. Seed time and harvest. All the seeds you are sowing now, you are going to get harvest, though. Be playing. You are going to get the harvest.
So if you know what is, if we all know what is good for us, we should start sowing the right seed. And everything produces after its kind. And the seed is in itself. Genesis, my God. God's ways and God's ways. If I, it's up there. Let me read it. It's there. Then God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind. The fruit tree that yields seed according to its kind. You bring forth after your kind. Whose seed is in itself on the earth? So a fruit tree, you see fruit, eh? Fruit. The seed is in the fruit. When you eat the fruit, what do you do to the seed? You plant the seed. The seed brings forth a tree that brings forth more fruit. That's life. That's life. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass. The herb that yields seed according to its kind. And the tree that yields fruit. Whose seed is in itself according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the third day. I'm begging all of you brethren. I'm appealing to you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Please, change course. Start sowing the right seeds in your life for your good. Children, start sowing the right seeds. This seed time. This time, you are in school, get an education. Go to class. I regret that when I was in secondary school, I did not like literature. I wish I did. I regret it till tomorrow. Now I know that when you are in secondary school, all courses are good and all courses are important. Learn all. Learn all. There is none you will not need in life. I thought that as an engineer, I would not need literature. Now I'm a communicator. I talk every day. Every subject they are teaching you in class, sit down and listen to it. There is none that is irrelevant. Don't deceive yourself. Don't fool yourself. We got fooled. It's our duty to tell you now. Learn all. This is time to get an education. Ask your parents questions. Learn. It's time to learn. It's seed time. It's seed time. All of you, um, who, all of you who say you are members of Redeemed Love Chapel, I don't know what you are a member of, but I've always said in this church, you are either a disciple, a worshiper, or a visitor. Unfortunately, not too many people over the years have proven to be disciples. A disciple is a student. A disciple is a learner. If you say you are part of Redeeming Love Chapel and you are not a learner, you have not changed your attitude to knowledge, to study, to Bible study, you are not, a, you are not part of this church. I don't care what you give. Let me tell you, brethren, your learning and your knowledge is more important to me than your offering. As much as we need money, your learning, your participation in learning, in study, is more important to me than your offering. I'd rather you don't give and learn than be giving and be staying in your house and not learning and not be interested. Have you not observed 
Have you not all observed that I don't do anything, anything carnal or natural to induce, incentivize anyone to be part of this house? It's not pride. I'm clear about what I want. I'm clear about my pursuit. I want you all, including me, to be disciples of Jesus. Disciples are learners. Disciples are students. That is sick time. If you don't learn when you should learn, if you don't learn what you should learn when you should learn it, the day will come, the day will come when you will now need the lessons of that that you didn't take several years ago. And you'll be paying for it. You'll be paying for it. It's a very serious matter, brethren. Seed time and harvest. We are studying now why the Bible is the word of God. I don't see many of you there. I don't see many of you. I, 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 when we go through the Bible, when we're in Bible study, I scroll through the names. I don't see many of you there. I'll be, this I'll be reminding you and be telling you. This I'll remind you and telling you. This I'll remind you and telling you. But 10 years down the road, 15 years down the road, 20 years down the road, we'll start comparing notes. We'll start comparing notes. We'll start comparing notes. When is harvest time? The plane. But you see this study. You see this study we are doing. When we did it 21 years ago, that's what opened my eyes to the scriptures. That I'm able to teach you the scriptures the way I do. It was this same study we did 21 years ago, 2003. There are some of you who were part of this house then. You didn't join in this study. You didn't participate. I've come back to it now 20 years down the road. We've made it comfortable. People labor, put the outline on your phone. Sit down in your house with your brethren, your family, read it, discuss it. Join us at 7.30, where Pastor Tyler will be discussing it. That's too much for you to do. You don't have data for that, but you have data for other things. Very good. Continue telling God that he's not first place in your life. Then when it's time to sing, you'll be singing, I love you, I love you. I love you, Lord, today. And God will be looking at you. You, you love me. Well done. Okari. Dalu. Try. Like I said, I'm talking with this, this way this morning because this is seed time. Brethren, this is seed time. It's a season. Turn to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. This is seed time. It's a season. It's a time to sow the word. Sow the word in your heart. Yes, it is. I know the outline sounds very academic. I know. I know some of you would think, look, 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 we are not going to be pastors. This is uh, for those in seminary. Why are they sharing these ones with us? Give us simple thing. No, you are a servant of God. Tell your neighbor, you are a servant of God. Uh, please tell somebody, you are a servant of God. You see, you have to understand, brethren, that the kind of questions that are being asked in the days that we live in, are very serious questions, and they challenge the faith of many. I was talking with my, one of the days that Cyril and I were working on the outline, and all of that, and he said to me that one of our leaders here, the son and himself were talking one day, and the, the guy asked him, why were some books removed from the Bible? The child, the son, of someone in this assembly. Your children, parents, have been exposed to very 
tough and difficult questions. Questions that you didn't have to, you didn't even hear. Now talk of have to answer. When you're in your 20s, when you're in your teens, when you're in your 30s, they're having to answer it now. And many of them don't have answers. Because they don't know. So please, it's seat time. Take this time of study very seriously. The period of development, original development. Seat time is a season of sowing. Next slide. Harvest. Harvest is the season of gathering crops. It's the time of the year when crops are ripe and ready to be gathered. The picked up crop is also called harvest. So harvest is a happy time. It's labor. There's hard work. But it's a happy time. Why? Because you are gathering crops. You are seeing the crops. And you are excited. I planted yams. And now look at the harvest. Wow. Praise God. This is wonderful. So that's harvest. It's a happy time. But I say it again. No seed time, no harvest. Say that. Say no seed time. I didn't hear you. Say no seed time, no harvest. You like harvest? Then so. Then so. There was something. Roger, can you remember? You know that that uh, that um, when you were sharing with the singles about uh, investment, do you remember the things you were saying about the season we are in and how people don't prepare for them? That the economy is usually uh, like a sine curve, goes up and comes down. Do you remember? You can't remember. Or because I've now brought the mic near you, what you shared has disappeared. <laughs> You told us the economy goes up and goes down and all of that. And then you said something about how that that's the reality, but people should, uh, if people are properly prepared, they can cope with it. Do you remember that thought? Please say it with your mouth. I'm trying to remember the ex exact words I said. <laughs> so, um, for the, okay, so the first thing I said was the present time that we are in um, was actually once the future for us. Today, yes, the present situation was a future yesterday. And um, for different people, today's situation impacts us differently. So for some people, um, because the economy is harsh, um, they, they struggle a lot. And the reason why it impacts us differently is because some people prepared for today, yesterday. So they sold yesterday. They invested. So even though the general consensus is that the economy is harsh, it's not impact impacting everybody in the same way. Some people are not even feeling it. Some people are not feeling the difficulties that um, some of us are going through because um, they, they are prepared for it. They may not know, they may not have known that it was going to be like this, but they were prepared for today. Something like that. Thank you. Let me tell you how I prepared for today from 95. So in 1995, I had people, rich people, who were prepared to stand by me in the ministry. Some had even made offers. Two separate people who don't know themselves had already offered to rent a T8 from a semi digital duplex in Festac Town. Two different people. One, one week before RLC started, the second, the second Sunday of RLC. In fact, that woman 
after the service, she was just sitting down the way I sit now. And then I walked past her and greeted her. And she said to me, Pastor, my ho- go, go and get a house, a temperature duplex T8. My husband and I would pay for it. So I had that offer. Are you with me, sir? I had that offer. I mean, I had, and I'm not kidding you, I had millionaires that I knew who were close to me who wanted to be part of the assembly. So I'm saying that at that time, financially, there were opportunities around me and Redeem Love Chapel was doing quite good. We had resources. But I told my wife. I said, you see this ministry we want to do. I'm not going to leave from the treasury of the church. I want to live by faith. I want to trust God. I want to develop myself, my spiritual capacity to believe God, to trust God, and to work with God for our sustenance. So I started that exercise at the time, it did not have, make sense. If I, when I was telling my friend, Pastor Matthew, this yesterday, he said, it's true. In fact, people like us were saying to ourselves, why is this man punishing himself for nothing? What is all this suffering for? 95. In fact, the, the, the Dickens board at the time, they tried to put me on a salary. I told them they should forget it. I'm not interested. So. The next time they met, they sent, they, they, I, I sat down with them. They said, Pastor, we want to tell you something, but before we tell you, I agree. I said, what type of, uh, how can I agree to what I've done here? But I looked at the people. I, I immediately knew what the problem was. So I said, okay, I agree. So they said, we want to make some money available. We're going to give it to the kids so and so. She will buy food into your house every month. I said, okay, fine. You can go ahead and do that. But after one year, I stopped them. I said, it's enough. You have tried. Fast forward the clock. Let's now fast forward the clock. It's now 28 years plus. Redeem Love Travel 29 years in November. I'm now grateful to God that I sowed that seed. Because you know what the harvest is now? Now, regardless of the financial state of Redeeming Love Chapel, whatever I want to do in my life, for my life, privately and personally, it gets done. It gets done. It will be, it, 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 it's not possible right now for me to impose my private bill on Redeem Love Chapel. If I do that, this ministry can't run. You can't buy the zoo. If I do that. Sow the seed for the harvest you want. So I'm telling you the story. At the time when I was doing that, those days, I looked like I was punishing myself. I looked like I'm suffering. I thank God for my wife, and I thank God for my children. They all now follow, follow. Eh? I say, we're going to do it. I remember telling my wife, we're not going to leave us. She said to me, so how are we going to survive? I said, exactly how we are surviving now. Ministry hasn't started. Are we not eating? Are we not picking our bills? How we are doing now is how we are going to continue. That's how we're going to relive the rest of our life. Not from the treasure of this church. That's not why I'm doing ministry. 25 years down the road. Whether Redeem Love Chapel has money or Redeem Love Chapel doesn't have money, it doesn't affect my plans. My, pre- my, pre- my own plans, they are not affected by the state of the finances of the church. I, I just get up, weigh my heart with my God, it's time for me to do this. 
Then I just make up my mind, this is what I'm going to do. When time comes, I just do it. It's harvest for seed soon. I gave you that story because what Brian Reggie just told us, it involves both spiritual, mental, and financial investing. That's why I told you the story. So I want you to see the spiritual side. There's a spiritual, there's a mental, and there's a financial side. It's mental discipline. When the economy is doing very well and everywhere is good and all of that, people cultivate indiscipline, indiscipline, unruly appetites. Unruly appetites because there is money. You spend on unnecessary things. You do unnecessary things. You compete. When there's a boss in the economy, you start complaining that Everything life, life has changed. I want life change. I want life change. You buy clothes you don't need. You buy shoes you don't need. You go to places you don't need to go to. God blesses you with money. You use the money to buy food to kill yourself. Eat unnecessarily. Eat things that are unhealthy. That's unruly. That's indiscipline. That's not pleasure. That's not life. That's not life. One day, one brother, I remember, I remember those early days, one brother saw me, said, Pastor, why are you not allowing us to buy food into your house? So I said to him, I said, look here. So let's say we start now. You buy, we start with carton of fish. So you buy carton of fish, carton of chicken. So after a while, I get used to that one. I now say, add good. You are looking at me. I said, then after a while, and I say, add one leg of cow. You are laughing. That's the indiscipline. That's the indiscipline that a lot of people cultivate when there is financial security. When they think that they have guaranteed source that they can see. You start cultivating fleshly appetites. So I told the brother, I said, leave me as I am. The one, the one my faith produces, I eat. I eat it with my family. We are content. Anytime we want to increase what we are eating, increase our capacity to produce. Don't go and fall back on church offering because church offering is there. That's what we do. Next slide, please. Are you getting something here today? Coal. At a low or relatively low temperature, especially when compared with the human body. A freezing, cold day. So we say it's cold when the temperature outside is lower than the, the body temperature. We say it's cold. Low temperature, cold weather, a cold environment. A manner, way of behaving or speaking that does not show kindness, love, emotion, and is not friendly. So sometimes you are with someone and you say to the person, you are talking to someone, you say, why are you cold today? Have you, have you ever said that before? When you say to somebody, why are you cold today, what do you mean? Sorry? The person is dull. What else? Eh? Sir? He's not active. He's not sharp. Eh? It's, not, it's, not, it's not boisterous. It's not, it's not warm. Say, so you are cold. Why are you cold today? So, there is cold and there is heat. 
This is a season. Everybody enters this season. There are times when you are cold. There are times when it is cold. There are times when it's not just physically cold. There are times when people around you are cold. There are times when you yourself, you are cold. It's a season. It's a season. As long as the earth remains, that season must come. You're not always going to be boisterous, warm, vibrant, charged. Every time you'll be cold. Job 24 7. Let's go there. It can be freezing to be alone on the day that your energy and enthusiasm is low. It can be really freezing. Job 24 7. Let's read. You know, I assured you it's a long day. Do you remember? It's after the service, I'll tell you why it's a long day. But well, it's a very long day. Job 24 7. They spend the night naked without clothing and have no covering in the cold. In the cold, you need covering. In the day when it is cold, you need what? Oh God, talk to me. You need what? But is that not correct? Yes. There are some of you that didn't know that the AC will be on today. You are shaking. This warm weather is where you are shaking. What if it's really cold? Amen? So, when it is cold, what do we do? We look for warm clothing to cover. Is that not correct? Yes. Ecclesiastes. Let me show you covering. Let me show you covering and tell you one or two hard truths. Well, truths, but you see, you need to hear it. When I say it, for some of you to be soft, for some people it will be hard. However it comes, take it. Ecclesiastes 4, what? 9 to 12. Two are better than... Can we all read together? One, two, go. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep what? Warm. But how can one be warm alone? So on the cold day, if you are alone, what will happen? It will be freezing Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. So, cold is coming. I didn't say it may come. It is coming. As long as the earth remains, cold and heat will not eh, cease. Tell your neighbor, cold is coming. When it comes... What, which companions do you have that will keep you warm? Listen to this. Listen to this. Please listen to this. I need your attention here. Yeah? Because I want to talk to you, my brethren. Please listen carefully. I've had people in this assembly, they started worshiping with us from the get-go. What does that mean? From the beginning. Who 
when they're in a financial crisis, they come to me, hear their words. It's not just one person who has said this to me before. I want to quote as much as I can verbatim. Pastor, I have this, this, this need. I need this. It's an emergency. It is this, it is this, it is this. I have no one else that I can go to but you. I talk, I sometimes I've asked one or two, ah, don't you have anybody in this church? Look, pastor, I don't have any friend. You are the only one I can talk to. Is that right? The day of cold has come. No companion. I learned very early as a minister of the gospel that trying to prove that I'm a self-made man, that I made it alone, is ignorance, is foolishness. I take pride, I actually take personal pride in acknowledging the imputes of my friends in my life, my brethren in my life, my children. I take pride in acknowledging it. I want to write books. I still want to write. I've not been able to write just because Sister Auntie Jean is not available. I pray she will soon be available. That's why I've not written. I have many things to write. But she's not available. Exegesis. I've not done exegesis for some time because the woman who is the coordinator for KBP Global in England has not been available for the last two years. We work with people. We don't work alone. We need people. You need people. The source of your highest pains will come from people, but the source of your greatest joy will also come from people. Are you going to sacrifice your highest joy because of the risk of your greatest pain? I won't. People will betray you. People will hurt you. People will offend you. People will oppose you. People will reject you. But there will be human beings who will stand by you, who will support you, who will keep you, who will, who will, who will cover you. You're going to throw it all away because of the fear of man and what man can do. I don't join in that foolishness. I don't join in that ignorance. And I've been saying it for years. I'm repeating it again. If you are alone in the day of cold, you won't have anybody to, to cover you. I can give you more examples. Of brethren in this place. So not, I'm not going far. Brethren here. One day, one of us was coordinating a particular activity, very important activity. We're going to travel. And he was coordinating that activity. And all of a sudden, I didn't see the person. So I waited and so eventually, late in the night, about eight o'clock thirty, the brother shows up. So I said, "Where do you go to?" He said, "I went to go and buy uh, some outfits for my child." So I looked at the man. I said, "You went to the market to buy outfits for your child. There is nobody in this church." Nobody in this big church that can do it for you. Why you face what you have to also face. And the man was arguing with me, so I left him alone. A lot of us are too self-conscious, too self-seeking, too self-protective to relate. So in the day of cold, and it's coming, not at me, it is coming. That's why some of you are feeling the hardship of this economy. 
Because it's now cold. You are freezing. Nobody to cover you. Nobody. You know an observation I made, Bra Lawrence? Do you know an observation I made? You know, I try to follow our business leaders and political leaders in the news sometimes. You know one of the things I notice about them? Regardless of where they are from, their network of relationships is very, very wide. Very wide. In fact, it's so wide, apart from it being across the entire nation, it's even in Europe, in America, in Asia. You, 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 you read some men telling you, this man is my personal friend. You'll be wondering, how, how is this trader in Abba friends with president of the U.S. or a senator in the U.S. or an MP in U.K.? How? What? How? Be there. Be alone. All right? Be alone. Your brethren, your brethren who are here, you fellowship with every Sunday. Fellowship with every Sunday. You don't know them. They don't know you. You visit no one. Nobody visits you. And you think it's smart. We all think it is smart. And when crisis comes, you may end up in my office. Pastor. There is nobody that can help me. It's only you I know. How can you, how can you know only me, Redeemer Love? How can you know only me, the Redeemer Love Chapel? <laughs> Am I the only one in Redeemer Love Chapel? John, am I the only one in Redeemer Love Chapel? How can you know only me, only me? That is an indictment. One day, one woman came to me. One woman came to me to tell me she needed 60 something thousand. <laughs> so, I, so I said, Have you done this? Don't you say, Yes, yeah, she has told us. She doesn't have anybody she can talk to. <sighs> so, well, she's somebody I've known for many years. So, she was somebody I could talk to very freely. So, I had to tell her, I said, Look here. I asked her, How old are you? I didn't even wait for her to answer me because I know her age. I said, you're about this age. I know when you left the university. It's over 20 years you left the university. 20 years after leaving the university, you are looking for 60,000. You are coming to me, telling me that you have nobody that can give you. Your contemporaries raise one billion naira to do business. You can't raise 60,000. It's a shame for your information. But you know why it is so? Because of how we relate, how we connect, how we network, how we interact. So in the day when it's cold, you're alone. Well, tell your neighbor, change. They say I should change. Hey, this is your neighbor, you're telling me. I should change. Yes, I will change. It means I will improve. Because I have a wide network of friendships and relationships. There is no part of this country that I want to do something. I don't need to leave my bed. My bed. Look, I stayed on my bed one day in the UK and oversaw the travel of one of our daughters in this church from Lagos to her camp what they call youth service camp? Eh? Orientation camp. Eh, orientation camp in Katsina. As she was entering the camp, I was the first person that spoke with her. When she entered the camp, I said, okay, thank God you have arrived safely. I dropped my phone. I supervised the trip. Because we relate. We network. We relate with people. We treat people well. We respect people. We honor people. We acknowledge People who do things in our lives, no matter how little. We look for ways to contribute to others too. We have our fears. I've been betrayed. I've been backstabbed. In fact, you, not, I've not just been backstabbed. They twisted the knife. 
They twisted the lives of. So that's not it's not it's not a big deal. We have been backstabbed, we have been slandered, we have been misunderstood. It won't stop. Let me tell you, brethren. Nobody that is doing better than you talks about you. If anybody is talking about you, you are better off. Face your front and do what you are doing. Don't be distracted. Face your front. Do what you are doing. Face your life. Move forward in your life. So call. Heat. The quality of being hot, high temperature, intensity of feeling, especially of anger. I don't think they want me to see. Okay. Intensity of feeling, especially of anger or excitement, make or become hot or warm. So there will be seasons when you are excited. There will be seasons when you will be warm. There will be seasons when you will be angry. When you are angry, leverage on it. Anger is something you can leverage on for development, for progress, for focus. Anger. If you know how to use it, it's a very powerful weapon. Well, many of us use it to complain. We use it to be distracted. No! Use it to focus. Use it to focus. Focus on what you're doing. Take that energy. If they just, someone just insulted you, take that energy. Put it into your project, into what you are doing, into yourself, into your development. So this is also a season. Summer and winter. The coldest season of the year in the Northern Hemisphere from December to February and the Southern Hemisphere from June to August. So the Northern Hemisphere is where you have Europe. The Southern Hemisphere is where you have South Africa, Australia, New Zealand. So right now, it is winter. In South Africa, it's very cold as we speak now in South Africa, while it is warm in Europe. Winter is the season with the least daylight hours. I don't like that season. Belema knows. <laughs> I don't like that season. When it is 3 o'clock in the afternoon, it's like when it's 5 o'clock here. By 4 o'clock, it's dark. The first time I saw it, ah! it was not easy at all. Man, everywhere dull, drab, cold. And you'll be dark like that. 4 a.m., about sometimes 8 a.m. Is it up to 8 a.m.? Yes, 8 a.m., it'll be dark. Pitch dark. So the daylight hours are very short. Guess what? All of you are like premiership. That's when they are playing the game. <laughs> Have you ever kicked your foot against a hard object when it is cold? See where all of you are. Say, ah. No, I want to know. Have you ever, has it ever happened to you? How is the pain? So imagine what those footballers go through playing with iron studs in the cold, freezing winter. Well, now that time when you go to work, so that summer they can go on holiday. One day, I asked one woman, 
How do you guys cope in Alaska? Because Alaska is serious. Those ones really see daylight. She said, here yeah, we don't discuss the weather. You dress for it. Full stop. That's what you do in winter. You dress for the weather. This is where companionship comes in. This is where righteousness, orderliness. Or, you, know, you know, righteousness is a garment. Do you know that? Talk to me. Do you know that? Order is a garment. You dress up for winter. You don't complain about the weather. You dress up for the weather and go about your job. That's what to do. Have you noticed that in these seasons, nobody goes on their knees to pray, let the season change? Are you aware? It's rainy season, it's rainy season. Plan with the weather in mind. This is rainy season. Stop binding the weather. Stop, the, stop the rain from falling. That rain you are, you are not you are saying should not fall. Farmers need it. Even people like us need it for our green field. Amen. And for the hedges. So, dress for the weather. Go and get rain boots. Get raincoat. Get umbrellas. You already know your environment. When rain falls everywhere, it's wet. And all of, is that not correct? The slippers you are wearing in dry season is what you want to wear in rainy season. Then you'll be complaining that your, your slippers caught. This environment, this Nigeria is too hard. No, you are not using sense to live in the Nigeria. Go and buy rain boots and wear rain boots. Put your slippers in your bag. Or your shoe. When you get to where you are going, bring, take your, keep your rain boots and then wear your shoes. That's what to do. Get yourself a raincoat and an umbrella. I said this some years ago. I kept telling the people in the office, tell me, so one day, well, Imaru, it's not you I sent to go and buy it for me. Huh? Okay, it was past us, yes. This is going to get me rain boots. As soon, not too long after I get my rain boots. One Sunday, I was coming to service and rain was falling. I just wore my rain boots, wore my raincoat, and walk, I walked normally. I strolled, I strolled to church. When I got to church, I removed everything, wore my clothes, wore my shoes, and I came to service. Dry. Dress for the weather. Stop complaining about the weather. Dress up for it. Invest in what will make you dress up for it. It's rainy season, brethren. Get rain boots. You are not mobile. So you are walking around. Get what? Uh, don't behave like those who are mobile. Those ones, they will come out of their house, enter their car. Is that not correct? Uh, and drive to where they are going. Stop getting annoyed when they drive past you and splash water on you. Wear a raincoat. You know what I'm saying? Dress for dress for the weather. That's what I was told by this woman. She said, in Alaska, we don't discuss the weather. We don't say it's cold. Everybody already knows that. You dress for the weather. Nighttime predominates during this winter season. It's dark most of the time. Has the highest rate of precipitation, prolonged dampness. Blizzards are possible and cause transmission delays. And so during this period, it is very easy to be lazy. It's very easy to be sleeping. Am I communicating? Very easy. But it's a season. God says, as long as the earth remains, this season will come. You can't wish it away. Summer. Summer. The warmest season of the year in the Northern Hemisphere from June to August and the Southern Hemisphere from December to February. Let me show you something in scripture about this season. Proverbs 
Proverbs 6. Are you tired? Proverbs 6. Verse 6. Can we all read together? We are going to read from verse 6 to verse 11. 1, 2, go. Go to the ant. I can't hear you. I need to hear you. Let's start it fresh. 1, 2, go. Go to the ant, you slugger. Consider her ways and be wise. Which, having no captain, overseer, or ruler, provides her supplies in the summer. When does she provide her supplies? When does she provide her supplies? And gathers her food when? So harvest time is the time to gather your food. Summer time is the time to gather your supplies. So those of you who are not used to gathering your supplies, go and meet those who know how to do it so that they can teach you how to do it. Some of you are used to buying food every day. You go to the market and buy two cups of rice and buy tomato for the meal. Some of you are used to that. You have convinced yourself that you can't afford to live differently. I am telling you here today that you can go and meet women who are wise. They will show you how. I can just name one for you now. After service, go and meet Ms. Oladipo. She's there at the back. Go and ask her how you can start buying food in bulk. Stop saying you don't have the money. If she's too busy, I just saw Ms. Ogbanga. Go and meet Ms. Ogbanga there. Go and meet people. Let them tell you. If she's too busy, who else? Uh -huh. Meet Mrs. Chikeleze. Because I know she buys things in bulk. <laughs> Her husband told me many years ago that there's a place they keep yams. Do you remember the story? <laughs> he said there is a line it must not go below. Once it goes below that line, he has to add more yams because he likes pounded yams. So meet them. There are people who teach you how. I met a woman once. I met a woman once who does not buy food in the market. She buys farms. The farm. She go to a village. When it is planting time, she will buy the farm. So when it's harvest, they harvest it and keep it for her. She ships it to Lagos. And she learns how to store her food. She buys food once a year. You have to learn how to gather your supplies and stop giving excuses that you don't have money. Everybody has an excuse. Nobody has enough. Learn how to gather your supplies. God told me at the beginning of RLC, he said, the biggest spender in any organization is the chief executive. Separate yourself from the money. If you do that, you people will have money, number one. Number two, learn how to gather small, small money and use it to do big things. Learn it. So I've been learning it since 95. That's why you don't see me raising money. That's the reason. We have learned how to gather our supplies. Learn it. Go to the ant and learn. That's if you are one, if you are somebody who all you do now is you gather food, you only, you can only provide food for one day. Start. Think. Sit down with yourself and God. Ask me questions. I want to now move to from one day to three days. Or from one day to one week. Learn it. Learn it. 
Gather your supplies. Summertime is the time to gather your supply. If you are too lazy to do that, you will suffer hunger in the winter. Learn it. Day and night. Day and night. A period of 24 hours beginning at midnight. During this time, the part of the earth facing the sun experiences daylight, while the part facing away from the sun experiences darkness or night. Go with me to Romans 13. Don't be lazy and don't be ashamed. You know one thing I, let me say this, one thing I, I, I observed for years in this assembly is what I like to describe as foolish pride. Foolish pride. People don't know something. You point them to somebody who knows. They are too proud to go and meet the person and ask and say, teach me. Why can't you meet people to teach you? Your pastor meets people to teach him. The man teaching you meets people to teach him in this assembly. You cannot meet people to teach you. It's, I call it foolish pride. I've seen it for years in this assembly. I now want you to correct it. So in this country, the poor spend more money on food than the rich, because of how they buy small, 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 small. Tell your neighbor, gather your supplies in the summer. I was telling a brother a story yesterday. I was in the office and I was telling him this. I said, when we, when we came to the continent of Nigeria in 1967, we moved to a house in Surulere. We lived in Surulere. Our landlady, then in Lagos, we pay monthly rent. Rent was paid monthly. Not this one now that we pay every year. One, every year. Sometimes to start living in a place. Some landlords have to pay two years, some three years. But then, you pay your rent monthly. Our landlady never comes every month to collect her rent. She can come in the month of April to collect rent. The last time she came, she's come in April. The last time she came was maybe November, the previous year. She now comes in April. And she'll be shouting from outside as she's coming, Mr. Yerifo, my rent. <laughs> ah. Anyway, she will come to collect her rent. So she can come that April. The next time she can come again will be December, that same year. So she was, and you can't predict when she will come. She doesn't, you see, you know, young people don't know life without mobile phone. Yeah? And there was no mobile phone. In fact, there, there was no landline. Many of us here have landline, not of mobile. So she just breezes in. Every time she comes, I was a child, but I used to, I used to make, I, I, I saw something. Now as an adult, I realized what was going on. Every time the woman comes, my father goes to the wardrobe, brings out her rent money, and gives it to her. Every time. There was no time. He said, sorry, go and come. Every time. He goes in, brings out the rent money, and gives it to her. As an adult, I now realize why it was so. Because what was happening is that every month, when it is time to pay his rent, he takes the money and he keeps it aside. Every month, he takes the money and he keeps it aside. Every month, he takes the money and he keeps it aside. 
Anytime she surfaces, he just goes, bring her the money and give it to her. Your rent is due November this year. How much have you gathered? See the all of you are looking. Your rent, those of you who are renting, landlords, you are free. Those of us who are renting, your rent is due. How much have you gathered? If we were wise like the ant, what would we be doing? Every month, when we have money, what do we do? We will set aside something for the rent. Set aside something for food. Because you must sleep and you must eat. Basic needs. Before you do anything. Before you do anything. Where you sleep, what you will eat. Before you touch any cloth. That's gathering your supplies in the summer. Your rent is due next month. This month you are believing God. Father, in the name of Jesus, see, see, life would have been better. No, let's, seriously, life would have been better if, let us say, let us say, let us for the purpose of discussion say that your rent is 240,000 naira a year. So that means you pay 20,000 naira every month. So every month, you tell yourself, let me try and set aside minimum 15,000, otherwise 20. Am I communicating? So every month you are putting it, you keep it somewhere. If you don't want to keep it cash, you can keep it in your account, a dedicated account. You set it aside. That's gathering your supplies. I'm showing you the practicality of what we read, though. Uh, as long as the earth remains, quote it, quote it, as long as the earth remains, Oh, 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 oh. Start afresh. As long as the earth remains, they've rescued you. One more time. Seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not see. My friends who studied medicine say to me, that once you enter the medical school, that's when it's time for you to do your second MBBS, um, anatomy, physiology, and biochemistry. You do that for two years, then you do an exam. When you pass the exam, you must get minimum 50%, then you can now cross over properly into medical school. That's where a lot of people fall by the wayside. And they said to me those days, that the truth is that if you want to prepare properly, you start from day one. From that, as, you, as, the, as the session starts, you start immediately. Starting one year later, you're already late. One month later, you're already late. If you really, really want to do well, you have to start immediately preparing. Preparing. So daytime and nighttime, Romans 13. Verse 11. And do this knowing the time that now, sorry, and do this knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Why is it time to wake up out of sleep? For now, our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent. So night time is when you sleep. There's time for rest. There's time for sleep. Night time is the time to rest. As a positive use of night time, the time to sleep is the time to rest. The night is fast spent. The day is at hand. 
Daytime is the time to be awake. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness. And let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. The night is far spent. She wake up. She wake up. When we were not saved, ignorant of God's salvation, we were in darkness. It was night. We were in darkness. We were in sin. We lived in revelry and drunkenness, in parties. I was going to clubs and partying. But the day is at hand. During the day, you are to cast off the works of darkness. You're not supposed to be wallowing and sleeping in sin. You are to cast off the works of darkness during the day. When a person is in sin, when a person is in 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 in, in, in lewdness and lust and revelries, that person is living in the night. They're in the night. It says, as people are in the day, put on the armor of light. Put on the armor of light. The clock is ticking faster than we realize. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Make no provision for the flesh. Jesus said, I must walk the walk people sent me while it is day. For the night comes when no man shall be able to walk. Pastor Tyler told me years ago that his wife's dad said to him, Pleasure is good after hard work. After hard work. When you are invested, when you have labored, when you have produced, then it is lovely, it's fruitful, it is bliss to live on the fruit of your labor. There is night when no one can walk. When you have to rest, that rest will be sweet if you have walked during the day. That rest will be hell if you were lazy during the day and did not walk. Seasons of life. Daytime and nighttime. I must walk the walks of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no man shall be able to walk. I read my last scripture and I give you my passing thoughts and close. That's quite short. Thought it would be longer. Ecclesiastes, chapter 3. Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 1. So everything, let's all read it together. One, two, go. So everything, there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. No, it's okay. I just want chapter 1, no, verse 1. One day, Jesus Christ was in his house with his brothers. Oh, it was, well, I think he was with his brothers, whether in their house or in his house. I don't know. But he was with his brothers. And his brothers looked at him and said to him, Why don't you go to Jerusalem, go to the jury, and let them see you? No one who does what you are doing hides himself, but wants everybody to see him and know him. Hear the words of Jesus. 
Jesus said to them, Your time is always my time. It's not yet come. In other words, Jesus is saying, I don't just move about. I do my things in timing. I do my things in my time. Do you know your time? Do you know your seasons? What's the season of your family? What season are you in now? Do you know? Seriously, do you know? I know the season of Redeeming Love Chapel. Right now, our season is reconciliation, restoration, and refreshing. That's the season we're in. It will climax with our, thanks, our anniversary, our Kingdom Life Conference. That's the season we're in. I've always functioned in seasons in this assembly. I don't just preach messages and do things. I recognize the season, then I walk in the season. What's the season of your family? What season are you in? Seriously speaking, what season, head of home and deputy head of home, what is the season of the home? In what season now is your family? What season? Do you know? You should know your season and cooperate with your season. Just imagine. Just imagine if the mango tree and the orange tree could talk. And they are next to each other. And the mango tree is fruiting. And you know how mangoes fruit. And everybody is going under the mango tree. And going to go and pluck mangoes. And are talking about the mango tree. And everybody behaves as if there is no tree beside it. Just completely ignore the orange tree. And everybody's going there and plucking fruit. And say, ah, this mango is fantastic. What? What? Ah, ah. Why did they get the seed that they used to plant this tree? This is fantastic. Sit there, celebrate the fruit, eat, eat, eat. Go, gather some in, in sacks and go. And all of that. Then one day, you hear you. You hear the orange tree complaining. What's all this partiality about? And this cheating? Eh? Why am I not fruiting at this time? Like the mango tree. What will you tell the mango tree? Sorry. What will you tell the orange tree? Huh? It's not your season. That I should wait for his hair to fruit. Sometimes, when you are comparing yourself with people, it's ignorance and foolishness. Because you are not in the same seasons. You are not in the same seasons. So you need to know your season. You need to know your time. Jesus rebukes the, he rebuked the, the Pharisees. He said, you people can go outside. When you look at the sky, you say, wow, it's quite cloudy today. Rain is going to fall. You can, you can read the weather, but you cannot read the signs of the times. So even spiritually, you ought to know the season we are in with God. Universally, beyond your own life specifically, and beyond this assembly uh, 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 specifically, even what God is saying and doing, you should be able to read the signs of the times and know the season. So, seasons, brethren, life is in seasons. If you know the seasons of your life, you just do what you're supposed to do in those seasons. You just do what you ought to do in those seasons. In the early days of Redeem Love Chapel, I had the time, I had the money, I had the know-how, I, know I had everything to be globetrotting, going all over the world preaching. I knew that was not the time for that. This is time for me to sit down and invest in my associates. Train them, develop them, nurture them, invest in them. I talk from morning to night every day. Every day, morning to night. We're out, we're we worn out. Well, 
I don't have to do that anymore. It's a different season now. They're all now men in their own right. You should know your season. You have small children. Your friend has adult children. Two of you are friends. And two of you are planning programs. Your friend is an adult children. He's going out. You two, you are planning to go out. Who will look after your, your, your small children? Your, child, your friend that has adult children can go out because the adult children can take care of themselves. Is that not correct? Yes. Then when you find yourself forced to stay at home because of your small children, every little thing they do, you'll be beating them up and down because you are annoyed that you couldn't go out. My friend, calm down. <laughs> it's a season. It's a passing phase. It will not be forever. Are you with me, brethren? <laughs> You're beating the child for nothing. Not knowing that mom is very angry. That she couldn't go for her wedding reception. Turn to your neighbor and say to your neighbor, seasons of life. Life is in seasons. Amen? And you need to recognize the seasons and cooperate with the seasons. Cooperate with it. Even marriage. Marriage has seasons. Marriage has seasons. You need to recognize them and cooperate with the season. Cooperate with season. Praise God. I said praise God. While the earth remains, while the earth remains, yes, 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 shall not what? Let's stand up on our feet. I thought I would speak for three hours. I'm very disappointed. Eh? <laughs> I'd like you to pray. Look, brethren, it doesn't, look, see, let me tell you the truth. Truth. The day, our people say the day you wake up, your what? Your morning starts, have you? Once you wake up. So, some of us are just waking up. Instead of crying about yesterday, just wake up today. And start. Yesterday was night. Is that not correct? It's daytime now. You have woken up. Lift up your hands to God and talk to God and say to him, Lord, yesterday was night. I've woken up. Living in regret of yesterday will not change today and tomorrow. But if I do the right thing today, it will affect tomorrow positively. Show me the right thing. Show me the seasons of my life. See, I'm showing you, I'm giving you what to pray in English so that you can pray it. And I'm speaking slowly so that you can hear it and pray it with your own voice to God. Say to the Lord, show me the seasons of my own life. Crying about tomorrow, or oh sorry, crying about yesterday will not change anything. So I'm not going to engage in that. Father, I'm not going to engage in that. You didn't bring this message to me because... You want me to cry about the, uh, the past? No. You brought it to me because of reconciliation, restoration, and refreshing. That's why you brought this message to me. It is for the purpose of reconciliation, restoration, and refreshing. So, Lord, you will bring reconciliation into my life in all the areas where there is discord, conflict, Disagreement, commotion, chaos. I seek you, Lord, for reconciliation. Restoration. Is it your spouse? Is it your child? Is it your job? 
Is it your business? Is it your marriage? What, what area? Is it your ministry? Is it your spiritual life? Is it a very strategic relationship that was important to you and you did not realize that? But now, and then you mistreated it or you did one or two wrong things or took one or two wrong decisions, but now you realize it's time for restoration. Talk to God. Talk to God. That's the purpose of this message. It's for the purpose of reconciliation with God and with one another. Restoration. And refreshing all who are weary, all who are worn out, all who are tired, all who are exhausted. You are exhausted mentally, exhausted emotionally. Receive refreshing. Receive refreshing. Receive refreshing. Receive refreshing. Receive refreshing. Only the Lord can give. Refreshing. Receive refreshing. Only the Lord gives. Receive it. Thank you. Thank you. I pray for your children. Pray for each and every one of them that these three hours will begin in their lives. Reconciliation. They begin to reconcile themselves with themselves and you, O oh God. All their contentions and arguments we cease. They become reconciled with you and with themselves. Restoration and refreshing. Let it be so. Let it be so. Let it be, oh God, that when tomorrow's opportunities come, we are ready. When tomorrow's challenges and crises come, we are ready. When tomorrow's responsibilities come, we are ready. Thank you. Thank you. We make the necessary adjustments. And investments today, spiritually, mentally, psychologically, physically, financially, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And everybody say, Amen. At least you may be seated.